and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for the return of Orzhov Troll Knights. First time that we're going to be playing this deck um, after the bannings from Monday. And you can see I'm I'm trying some some different stuff here in the deck. Um, of course, this is my cat Hawkeye for those y'all new, but yeah, he's awesome. Anyway, um, you may remember you know we had the Wintermore Commanders in here, and you know they're. They are kind of like the card that we kind of sideboard out a lot, but they, they made like our acclaimed contender a little better. It was, you know, just, it was just an okay two drop. I know a lot of y'all that play the deck aren't, weren't too impressed with the card. So I'm, I'm trying to take, I'm taking those three out and I'm getting the fourth acclaimed contender and fourth midnight reaper in here because both of these cards are really powerful, but a acc acclaimed contender, you really want to have like the other night that you play first, hopefully with the, just the 12 knights that cost one or two mana. <clears throat> hopefully we're not, um, too slow and hopefully we get to play one of these other knights here first before acclaim contender of course if we don't have any of those 12 we could still drop midnight reaper on turn three and that's that's a perfectly reasonable turn three play to be able to lead with first um so yeah i'm just just maxing out on, on these two cards because both those cards are really good um but then then we have one more one extra slot because you know we had three of those and since, since I'm upping the curve a little bit there, I'm thinking about just putting in the 26th land. So we got 26 lands in here now um, instead of 25. So we'll see how that goes for us. It, that may be too many lands. The other thing I thought about doing is we play, you know, we've always had four Clackbridge Troll, four Ethereal Absolution. But with the metagame not being as many of the green decks and a lot more like control decks right now, Ethereal Absolution honestly isn't as good. The reason why playing four Ethereal Absolution was so good is because there was just so many green decks and piling on, you know, your, your first Ethereal Absolution was 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 pretty good, but then piling on your second one um, and then your third one, and suddenly it was just they couldn't play any creatures because you had just too many Ethereal Absolutions in play and your creatures were huge. But honestly, maybe the deck should just move away from Ethereal Absolutions um, instead, in this new format, if we have a lot of control decks, because against control decks, this is just not a very great card, especially for six mana. Um, but I want to, you know, like, we're going to give it a try again. It does just work so well with Clackbridge Troll, you know, kills all the goats that you give your opponent uh, with a Clackbridge Troll that helps your troll kill them quicker. And so instead, I'm going to be playing a fourth, or I'm going to be play, trying a Cavalier of Night in here instead of the fourth Ethereal Absolution. As, because a Cavalier of Night gives me a little extra removal and just works really well with these three drops. You know, like whenever it dies, you get put these three drops back into play, and that works really well there. If 26 lands looks to be too much, I think I may just put in uh, the third Soren here in the deck. But also the, the White Cavalier is another good option um, as well. Um... Yeah, those are those are some other good options. Um, <clears throat> I mean, even Circle of Loyalty or even Cauldron of Eternity. Like honestly, maybe this could be a Cauldron of Eternity deck that you can find Cauldron of Eternity with this thing, or Circle of Loyalty, of course, as well. So we'll just kind of see. Anyway, um, yep, that's that's about it. Uh, let's see, sideboard. Um, I uh, added in a couple Kaya for all the Witches Oven decks running around. Um, which we actually haven't seen that much recently. So maybe we don't need like Kaya and Disenchant as much. But Disenchant kills uh, not only Witch's Oven, but then also um, it's an instant speed answer for Wilderness Reclamation, which is important before they get to untap all their mana and uh, gets rid of Fires of Invention as well. So we'll give this uh, we'll give this a try. Let's see if 26 lands is too much. And yeah, maybe uh, we're gonna play uh, some matches over in ranked. I'm planning on playing four matches, uh, unless they, you know, unless it take a super long time. But hopefully, we get time for four matches here. Yeah, so I have three Bolas Citadel for the control matchup, but yeah, maybe if it turns out there's just like more control and Ethereal Absolution isn't that good, uh, you know, we could move away from Clackbridge Troll and go towards Bolas Citadel there. So you know how like we did really good with the Selesnia. Um, <laughs> Hawkeye's just talking for me. We did really good with the Selesnia Knights deck yesterday. And this is like kind of similar, but this is like Orzov. 
I honestly kind of feel like maybe the best thing to be doing right now is maybe combine those two decks and make an Abzan Knights. And basically play the Selesnya where you get um, you know, Knight of the Ebon Legion and Murderous Rider. So you get like good removal with Murderous Rider. And but then you you know you still get the card advantage with like the Great Henge and stuff like that. And maybe just kind of combining these two decks now. If Ethereal Absolution isn't gonna be as good. Hmm. 26 land deck. Have no lands. All right, I'm just gonna get a land out of the deck, and I want to I want to get that shuffling here before I start scrying. So if we have a land on top and I scry it to the bottom, I'm not gonna shuffle it back later. So we're just going to we're gonna get that in play here first before we start scrying. If you show remorse, <laughs> I'll show okay, I heard them talk about the cat decks. Might be a bad idea. Um, I assume the next B and R oh, announcement is like probably the middle end of next month. I assume I'm not really expecting any real changes right now. You just let me know if you're up for round two. So there we go. We got we got good value from the Skylands, putting two two things to the bottom. Ooh, no wrath. I train At least not yet. Thoughtfulness before action. I won't forget our time together. Cyrus, welcome back. Thank you so much for that sub for the six month in a row. So six lands, why not keep absolution? Yeah, it, it basically just doesn't do anything against control. Like it's it's not worth it. Like, you know, they can just kill my creatures and it's it's not gonna make creatures because my opponent's not playing creatures, so I am not going to sit this It's basically just a, a very poor card in this matchup that I didn't I've got it. They don't really want to play <laughs> yeah I know you never left but still you're back in the sub club yeah what yeah what I'm what a good question the question was what am I considering when I'm scrying top or bottom I'm I'm looking for threats that why is this one not why is that Suppose that's how it was meant to happen. Oh, because that one's made from Worthy Knight. Got it. Um. I'm looking for threats that my opponent's gonna have to deal with. Like they that are that are pretty decent at, at finishing out games. Prowess. 
Yeah, I know. That's that's the thing. I, I definitely want to go into the white part of the mastery tree just for Worthy Knight, because, yeah, I, I really want Worthy Knight. I think it's, you know, I'm finishing off red right now. It's going to be the second to last one that I get, but I'm I'm sad. Oh, uh, what a killer. So, of course, playing Knight so we can just still activate Castle Art and Veil. That was just a wonderful turn for my opponent. Countering my acclaimed contender. Um, Thought Erasure away the Clackbridge Troll. Get the get my 3-1 for free. Just Everything just worked perfectly there for my opponent, unfortunately. Uh, if we lose this, which is kind of looking like now with Gadwick, that was the turn. Warrior, I concede. Yeah, correct. That's deck. De that yeah, it's definitely deck dependent, and just what's in your hand, and yeah, what what your matchup is. A lot of other times, I've been keeping Ethereal Absolution there. Um, but yeah, so it definitely matters what what you're playing, what your opponent's playing. You know, what's basically what's going to help you win the game that you're playing. I okay, just love sitting. His favorite place to sit is like right over there, right in front of the computer screen. And not to pick him up and move because otherwise I can't see the computer screen. Dang. Responsibility. That hurts. Trust me, I have a plan. Obviously, playing a, a Black Lance Paragon first didn't make a lot of sense. Man, Gadwick is so good. There's just so many cards. We played the Demure control deck yesterday that had Gadwicks, and there's, there's people in the YouTube comments that are saying, like, the Gadwick wasn't good. I don't really understand. How? Wait, they took Black Lance Paragon? It's like the worst card in my hand. I can't even play anything at instant speed because it's a fairy. Here goes nothing. I'm expecting a Wrath. Oh, just Dispersal. through their cards. They're down to just three plus this. Just 
Sorry to eat through their cards. Yep, Candice, it sure is. Yep, I have nothing scheduled for Saturday right now. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. So yeah, you want the first slot on Saturday? This will gain us some life, draw some cards. Well, now I can't. I was planning on attacking with the Midnight Reaper, but now I can't. Because I need the Knight in play to trigger a Claims Contender. So I can, I can sacrifice like the acclaimed contender to kill a brazen borrower to keep them from killing me so fast. All right, four color gates. Okay. Okay, sideboard needs some evaluation there. All right, I wrote it down. Thank you, Kendis. So yeah, we'll we'll play that uh, first slot on Saturday. Here we go. Well, we've grind through like all those cards. Um, now we got these brazen borrowers we gotta worry a boot. This would be a good time for an ethereal absolution. You know, there's the three in the deck. Killing brazen borrowers is nice. So we know we know one's down there. Haven't seen the other ones yet. Unless there was one. Unless there was one in the acclaimed contender cards that we saw. Maybe there was. I don't remember. It's kind of saying they're going to play a Wrath. See, no blocks. That's more like it. I guess we'll force him to have the wrath. <laughs> I 
And if they don't have Wrath, this is amazing for us. If they don't have Wrath and don't have Counterspell, we're doing great. I can't... I can't quite imagine that's going to happen. No Counterspell, no Wrath. But that'd be wonderful. Ooh... No Counterspell, no Wrath! No frames, either. <laughs> no frames, no Counterspell, no Wrath. Wow, we got game one. That's a big that's a big game to get, because now we get to add in all these Citadels. I could play just the one Ethereal Absolution because of Brazen Borrower. So I get those... Really annoying 3-1 creatures that beat you down. Maybe we keep one in. All right, let's give this a try. Oh, I, just, I just realized our, we're playing against somebody who's not a mythic yet. All right, good curve. As you can tell, I keep on looking over here because Hawkeye's sitting in front of the the screen. Like you like to do. Mm. I guess I could play Temple. It's kind of already playing the planes. Uh, the highest rank we've been at? Um, I don't remember. I know, like, one time we got to, like, 19, but I think there was, like, another time where we got higher than that. Like, I kind of feel like maybe I got to, like, number 8. I'm known for my... No, I am not making this up as I go. That's just kind of a guess there. Obviously, I can't play an instant speed creature because Teferi is a card. Don't worry, I got this. You remember it you remember me top ten at one point? So yeah, so so that'd be my guess. It's probably like eight. I don't really know. Sorry I'm late. I've got time. Yeah, it's just my own yeah, my own playlist right there. I think see and there's the link to the playlist. Yep, it's just just a Spotify playlist. Here goes nothing. They only have one blue source, which we saw like, you know, multiple absorbs. Maybe they don't have another counterspell for this. 
Yay. Ooh, that's pretty big. Huh. All creatures. This might be a bad idea. Fabled Passage is such a good land to hit. For a new deck to craft, doesn't have to be top top tier. We like to be somewhat competitive in the new meta game. Any recommendations yet? Um, I mean, so far, yeah, like, yeah, it's the new meta game. We haven't we haven't played a ton of decks, but so far, you know, I like that Selesnya Knights deck. I like this deck. As I talked about, I kind of want to <clears throat> combine them into an Abzan, uh, like an Abzan Knights deck. I think there can be some really cool stuff if you combine the decks. Um, so I don't really want to shock in with the Godless Shrine. There we go. Man, they're just that was just like all four acclaimed contenders right there. So I'm at eight. I feel like this is like my best plan. Like if if they wrath, I want to I want to sack ten non land permanents. Hey Stratton, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Trust me, I have a plan. Thank you so much. I don't know. I don't know if that was even worth it. 
Yeah, maybe I was supposed to sack the Citadel. Not the troll. That was probably a pretty bad play by me. That was probably a pretty bad play. Also, like, my opponent, like, doesn't have to Wrath anymore. Yeah, hero deck is a hero precinct one deck. So if I play Midnight Reaper, I go down to five. The Midnight Reaper could put me down to one. Try this. So, still assuming they have that wrath. So, there we go. I forced that wrath out of their hands. This just isn't going to work, is it? So, of course, I could kill the Brazen Barber, but then if I do that, because of the, the extra loot, this loses 5 life. So then I die. If they kill my Reaper and Rider, they just kill a creature.
gosh, that's such a killer. Man, this is so upsetting. I, I just that that sacrifice and everything. I, I just messed this up. But obviously, if they don't have a spell here, I get to attack with Murderous Rider. They block. I get to draw the Ethereal Absolution. I get to play it. My life is just fine. Right now, I don't have, I don't have a way to survive because this Gadwick's gonna kill me. I, I can kill the Brazen Barber, play the Lifelink creature, but then they tap it. I mean, I guess. I guess my only hope is they don't have any way to kill a creature. I guess we just go all out here. Just hope they can't actually play, kill a creature. Obviously, just playing the Brazen Borrower taps one thing. So all they need is a, another blue spell besides this. Um... This is my only line, though. Yeah. I messed this game up. There's no reason for me to have Citadel like that and lose that game. The, the tap the Citadel was the wrong play. All right, game number three. Magic's a difficult game, you know. Lots of lots of decisions all the time. It's a difficult game. Especially against uh, control decks that can make the game go really long. Give you more decisions. Ugh. No. Thought Erasures have been really good for our opponent. What? That's just the wrong card? They took the wrong card. Like... Did I realize that Acclaim Contender does nothing? I mean, sure, they... They have that, but a claim contender does nothing. Of course, we need a knight and play to trigger it. So if they just take the the midnight reaper. Then I don't have any knights. All right, so this is just gonna get bounced. But then next turn we'll be able to replay it, and they won't be able to bounce it. But they get six goats instead of three. It also takes half of the Brazen Borrower. <laughs> this would be a great time to find that Ethereal Absolution. <clears throat> We've seen our opponent play a lot of Kaya's Wrath. And not so much 
Not so much time wipe. Which is kind of weird with all these adventure creatures that they're playing and they had the the one three also. Alright, well now I have another knight in play. The darkness within. So normally I would keep the, de the destroy the brazen borrower up, but now, you know, like I, I just want to make sure that like a wrath doesn't kill all of her stuff. So they, they get to kill the Soren, but that's worth it. Soren put an acclaimed contender and a midnight reaper into play and gave me three life. Day, that's a good card. Yeah, that was pretty nice. This isn't a fight you can win. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. Hmm. A pretty pro pretty powerful troll. No, we didn't do any brawl today. I had two standard decks that I wanted to play. And so we're playing both of those. And then and then I had two donation decks to play here also. Um, I was pretty disappointed with how the brawl hit last, um, last week, like hit on YouTube. Like people just weren't interested in watching them on YouTube. Usually my, as you can see, like if you go to like the YouTube, like most of my videos are like, like two or 3000 views and the brawl ones were like 500 views. So that was really unfortunate. But maybe, you know, I just couldn't do, like, all the brawls. Like, maybe we just play, like, one brawl deck next week. Not have just the, the whole day be brawl, but maybe one brawl deck. Maybe people will watch that. No, I am not making this up as I go. Could have been too much brawl. Yeah, it's tomorrow's historic builds. Yeah, definitely going to be building around the, the 20 new cards. That's, like, going to be the main thing is building around the, the 20 new cards and seeing how... Uh, seeing what we can do with all those. Queen Necromancer has a nice ring to it. Well, I'm really glad we held this murderous rider. Rise and shine. Thanks, Vitellius. So we need to jank up the brawl decks. That's not a bad idea. I can't wait till after blocks to kill this thing because it's a fairy. Death won't conquer me so easily. Um, yeah, I could I could find the list of the new cards again. There you go. There's there's a list of the new cards. It's in there.
Yeah, oh I should God. probably have a command sit up for historic there. Yeah, so I'm not sure if the 3,400 gems is a good deal. For them or not. Uh, for the cards from the... For, like, the play set of all of them. We'll have to see... Have to see how many are, like, rares and how many are mythics and how many are commons and uncommons and stuff like that. I didn't see that being mentioned anywhere. Alright, force them to draw another Wrath. We will rebuild. Um, I think I'm probably planning on just using WoW cards. Besides Mythics, I have, I have enough WoW cards for the rest. I don't think I'll be spending gems for them. Yeah. I don't, I don't think there's many that are mythic or many that are rare. I think a lot of them are going to be commons and uncommons. That's more but like I, I don't know the exact numbers. So it's just hard to really say. I can no longer stand by and watch. I've got it. Wow. They drew a Teferi for turn, which drew him into a Wrath. I still had lethal there. Well, now they can't. Now they can't bounce with that Teferi anymore. Here we go. All right, finally got there. Was that our first match? Gosh, these games are so long. Can we stop playing against control? We need good green cards again to shut down these control decks. <laughs> it was 50 minutes. And yeah, same thing. Abzan Hero earlier that, that we played in ranked, we just played against three control decks. It was like an hour and 50 minutes for those three matches. I, you know, I'd like to play f five matches in two hours, not three matches in two hours. Ugh. They should just they should have just banned Teferi also while they were at it with the bannings. Nobody likes Teferi. We just got rid of that card too. All that card does is slow everything down. So I kind of want to put back Soren. Yeah, I think so. All right, again, we're going to start thinning. All right, well, we're going to kill that thing on turn six. Hmm. Well, now I should have grabbed a swamp. Yeah, especially I have castle here too. I should have grabbed a swamp. Wait, why didn't I block that? Sorry, I was sorry. I was thinking of your comment. I heard Hearthstone is is fast paced. I I definitely should have blocked that. Um, but no, I'm not. I'm not really interested in playing Hearthstone.
That was... That was not good by me. I should have blocked that. And now I should have played Fable Passage. I forgot about that. All right. Sorry, Hawkeye. I got to focus. I'm sorry, Hawkeye. Obviously, this turn they don't attack with the Paragon. Or with the Paradise Druid. Let me Paragon it. Should have blocked that last turn. Rad. We're going to go with Rad. Rad with the sub. Welcome to the channel, Rad. Nia Legends with Captain Sisse. Yeah, we definitely have to make a Captain Sisse deck. Hmm. I really need to block that Paradise Druid. My opponent's still playing pretty slow, which is good for us. I need to survive to play this Ethereal Absolution on 6, which it looks like. That's good. Oh, there you go. The Jeskai control deck got you into diamond. Awesome. That's awesome, Rad. Good job. <laughs> Good job. If I would have just had my 3-1 block this Paradise Druid, we would have had... I would have had two more life. Actually, I would have had five more life because of the lifelink. I would have had five more life, and they wouldn't have been able to... You know, they would have had that less mana, so they would not have been able to cast that that Swift end that turn. That, that decision is looking like it's going to cost me this. What would be great is another Ethereal Absolution. Get to double them up. I like that my opponent is not playing Rankle or Questing Beast. So I can't really beat those cards right now. Ooh, that's a good one. I'm going to be activating Ethereal Absolution to get a 2 2. Hopefully, they attack with just attack with the Order of Midnight or no attacks. I'll take either one of those. Uh, I don't like that.
No attacks. Absolution. Getting it done. <laughs> My 1-1 one, one is the same size as their Lovestruck Beast. So they have to have a 3-3 three, three creature to be able to attack with the Lovestruck Beast because, you know, it gets minus 2, minus 2. So basically they have to have, like, Rankle to attack with that thing. Oh, uh, that's annoying. Now all these things will draw a card again. Well, they're not going to necessarily draw a card again. That would be kind of weird. They have clothing in their deck, but they'll draw a card again. Yeah, these absolutions are so clutch. Tom's like, whenever you're playing against the creature deck like this, very clutch. <laughs> Let's do it. They're all dead. No. Cause, wait, how? I guess, no, I should have attacked. Because, yeah, this Lovestruck Beast just can't... It can't ever attack. Because they have to have something that survives. And anything that survives is going to turn into a 2-2 because two -two of the Great Henge. So they, they can actually never have a 1-1 one -one in play. With the Great Henge and Ethereal Absolutions. Because they can't have... Yeah, so I should have just attacked. Like, base again, Questing Beast. I require servants. Uh, they're just going to draw so many cards. But they can't really do anything, though. Even if they draw lots of cards. But yeah, like playing Foulmire Knight is now a draw two. It's a divination. That's the that's the one card. Yep, that's the only card that's gonna survive, basically. Not today, Death. Not today. So now they can't minus Liliana. Yeah, they may they may mill themselves. I don't know. Like, I guess we know about the murder the murderous rider. I don't know. They play it. They play it. It dies. It goes back to the bottom of their library. But then they draw a card. Death is enlightening. I have to just. Make sure we stay alive. Like, drawing a Soren would be perfect on our side. Yud! <laughs> $3 donation for triple absolution hype. <laughs> they were a lousy servant anyway. Thank you, Yud. <laughs> yeah, this is triple ethereal absolution. They get to draw their whole deck because of Liliana and the Great Henge. So they have like tons and tons of mana and all the cards they had, they would ever want. So yeah, how are they still in the game? Because yeah, because of these things just getting them all, tons and tons of cards. They've drawn an extra eleven cards. I guess even more than that, because, yeah, three of their Murderous Riders have gone down to the bottom. So if you add three to that, they've drawn an extra 14 cards.
don't know why they didn't attack there. Hey, Pem uh, Peppa on fire. Welcome, welcome. You made me come back to MTG and spend all that money. Thank you. And what about Teamer Walkers after the Oko ban? How would you change it? Or maybe have you already tried that? Yeah, Teamer Walkers is in a, definitely in a real rough spot after the Oko ban. Because, yeah, that, they really needed Oko, one. And then, two, the the deck was really built to beat Field of the Dead. Yeah, it had... It had it was, that's where it was designed. It was designed to play against Field of the Dead. Um, and so not only is the deck that it was built to design to beat is gone, but then also the best card in the deck, Oko, is gone. So yeah, it's it just kind of needs to be completely retooled, I guess. Um, which I don't have like a great solution to. I mean, you could just play more... You could just play different Planeswalkers, like more Mu Yanlings and Narsets and um, Chandras and Tamios and Kesmina and things like that. Nature will take back what rightfully belongs to it. Hmm. This will be fun to watch. That's that's a problem. So Death Touch and Trample. Yep, that's game. Means that they only have to do one damage to each blocker, and then the rest to me. That's why I didn't attack with the questing beast. Well, darn. We need the fourth ethereal absolution. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get these noxious grasp to spark. Legion's End. Yes, I could have blocked with three creatures to prevent me from dying there, but I, I thought I needed the, the third creature to attack the Vivian and start... I, I thought I needed to start killing this Vivian, which is why I didn't block with the third creature, because you know, if they had another Questing Beast, I was going to be dying there. But yeah, I really wanted to pressure the, the Vivian. Um, you know, we need to be finding, like, you know, trolls and sorns and just things to gain life. We did not... Yeah, if I would have had that extra life by playing that Paragon, whenever I... I was saying that was probably going to cost me. It did. You know, I needed that extra life to block that... That Paradise Druid a long time ago. So too many cards I want to bring in and not really cards I want to take out. Now I got to play these. Great Henge, Liliana... I I couldn't there's I couldn't create more knights when I had the chance. I didn't have any I'd have any way to make more creatures than what I did. I don't have anything to take out. I got to just take some stuff out. I don't know. I have too many cards I want to play. No, I've never tried a mono white Hero Precinct 1 deck. No, I've never tried building that. It's like Hero Precinct 1 rewards you for playing multiple colors. I should have cut a land. That's what I could have cut. It rewards you for playing multiple colors. And so playing a mono color deck with that. No, I've never tried that.
It just can't really be worth it to legions end those things, right? Oh, well, that's that's pretty fortunate. Why would they keep a just a one land hand? Sweetest friend. Certainly hoping they don't have a way to get rid of the ethereal absolution. Clackbridge Troll, that's a great card. That's a great card. Playing a bunch of a bunch of legions ends, so that's why I like kind of trimming on these things because they have a bunch of legions ends. I think I should be keeping these midnight reapers though. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, get rid of a land. Oh, I forgot about that. Yes, this, especially on the draw, I definitely should have cut a land on the draw. Darn. Yeah, you're right. Well, I'm glad, you know, we got just a two-lander, so we still have a lot of lands in here. Should be able to find a land easy enough. There we go. MG, what? Thanks for that sub, I appreciate that. Five months. And we're one away from another sub goal now.
So I thought they were just holding up Murderous Rider. That if I play Midnight Reaper, then they just Murderous Rider it. That's what I was thinking. I don't have a good hand against Questing Beast, though. I think instead of just taking two turn after turn after turn, we'll just get this thing out of here. Hope they don't have another one that returns it. They did have the Questing Beast. Oh gosh. Close your eyes, breathe, and listen to the sounds of the wild. Watch out, they bite. Okay, well that's not so bad. They didn't tick up. Ticking up would have been miserable. They they definitely should have ticked up. But I'm glad they didn't. Now we got Vivian out of here. Mm. That's rough. So we're pretty far behind. How powerful is Triple Troll? How powerful is Triple Troll? <laughs> you wish you could run a deck with 24s and 40 questing beasts. I know, they only let you play four, though. Some less DC have, like, two or three in them where you're, like... They, they let you play four of these... These questing beasts, you know. All right, so basically, if, the problem with not attacking... I, I would like to block questing beast, but the problem with not attacking is they have removal. I'm just, like, really dead. My opponent's play doesn't make a lot of sense. But I, I also I wanted to get play the troll though while I had Soren in play. For that lifelink. Yep, thought they had removal for it. Hey, Bice Cream, getting the sub from Kitty Dexterity. Thank you so much, there, Kitty Dexterity. Mm. This this causes lag a lot of times if I go over and click and try to put hype boats in the channel. There we go. That's something that causes lag. All right, we got there.
Yeah, is it Drake's a pretty good deck to start with? Yeah. This battle exciting for me. Yep, that's, so that's two goals towards our next 12-hour stream, and I'll update that after the stream. Uh, if I try to update that now, I, I have to, you know, like, it'll load the stream, and that, that will lag it a little bit. So, yep, we got two sub-goals to update there. Um... My opponent has this again, though. Just Liliana and the Great Henge, too much power for me. Combining them. I'm just playing two and three mana cards. GG's. That match is over. Let's move on to try to get try to get another match in here. First one took so long. It's already ten o'clock. We're normally in the stream and we have a long twelve hour stream for tomorrow too. So I don't want to stream too far over. Definitely learned that the Great Henge is incredible in both those games that we lost. Something that we already knew about with the Selesnia Knights that we were playing yesterday. The Selesnia deck, we were wrecking shop with that, the Great Henge. <laughs> Thanks, Arcanist. Well, our hand looks pretty awesome. Just until my opponent plays Flame Sweep. They probably don't have flame sweep though, right? Nah, they're playing Phoenix. They're they're probably not playing flame sweep. Uh, they wouldn't do such a thing. Double Ethereal Absolution against a Phoenix deck seems pretty good. So I, I didn't activate Knight 
So I didn't want to activate night before flame sweep. I want to be able to keep the activation available too. All right, so I got eight damage here. No, nope, not you. I know Trolley are cool, but this is the perfect time for Cavalier of Night. Oh, we got nine damage. Right, because we make new summoning sick creatures we get to sacrifice. Okay. Uh, yeah, a good budget grinder to build up my collection for a tier one deck. Um... Yeah, that's it's a that's a tough call. Um, I'm not sure, honestly. And it kind of matters like what you have like in your collection, what you like to play. It's it's really hard to recommend decks because everybody likes to play different things um, and everything. Because basically, all all I can really say is, you know, either you, know, you can take a look at like. Um, the standard metagame there's a link there see you know like what you what you kind of like what you want to work towards or or um you know check out my my youtube channel like if you go over to the video tab there's just tons of different decks you know just tons and tons of decks and so you can kind of see like if if anything stands out as something that you like that you want to build towards i don't know but yeah, I have dozens and dozens and dozens of decks there on the YouTube channel. Um. So Phoenix. Okay. Jace Beller, and it's, I mean, it's, it was really powerful in its standard format. Um, it's not as powerful, you know, like these days, but um, I think it, it would see like a, a pretty good amount of play if it was in standard. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I'm not sure exactly how you define a powerful card, but um, yeah, it's, it's good. It's, it saw a lot of play in standard. I mean, also one of the best things it did in standard though was after Jace the Mind Sculptor was printed, with the legend rules. Then, if your opponent had a Jace the Mind Sculptor and you played a Jace Beller in, that's two Planeswalkers with the name with the Jace tag on them, and so they would both just get sacrificed because you can't. That's that's how the legend rules were at that point. So you couldn't have. Um, you couldn't have two, you know, Planeswalker legends of the same type in play, you know, like, so this would be like two different Kayas. You couldn't, you couldn't have them both in play, not only on your side or on your opponent's side. And it counted all, you know, all Jaces were legendary Planeswalker Jace. And so you couldn't have two Jaces. So like if you played, um, back then, if you played, uh, give me a legendary creature, um, questing beast if you played a questing beast and then your opponent played a questing beast you would both have questing beasts in play you can't have two legends in play and so they just both get sacrificed immediately i don't like drawing the second kaya i wish i would have put the other one back to the bottom now but as as you know it's to maybe be able to get Phoenix from the graveyard. Electromancer does speed them up quite a bit, though. It's pretty easy for them to, like, discard Phoenix and return at the same turn.
down, down, down. No, the coil. Again, I would kind of want to fetch first. Because, you know, we're just putting a land down to the bottom, but now we're just going to shuffle it back. Yeah, I mean, I, I played Chandra Tribal a whole lot uh, previously, but... Um, I haven't played in a while. Oko was just a really big problem for it. Um, but I, I liked it a lot before rotation. In particular. Thank you so much, Arcanist. A, it's a good source there. I'll go ahead and put a link to that. So if somebody asks about a budget deck, you can just do exclamation point budget and it'll pop up. Okay, yeah, I saw your video on it. Seems really enjoyable. Yeah, I will uh I'll definitely keep that one in mind as as another deck to to get back to. Like I'll write it down over here. You know, without Oko. Another deck to to rebuild. Didn't see a door, so I let myself in. You beat me good for you. Shuffling me off my mortal coil. What? Better watch your darn. back from here on out. Double darn. I. Uh, so I, I was going to do the Abzan Adventures on Friday. I had you there. I was I wrote it down for I was gonna do it on Friday with because tomorrow we're gonna be doing all the historic stuff. Cause, and you and you asked for like Monday or Friday, right? Like didn't did you want Monday or Friday? Okay, on Friday. Yeah. Do you have do you have a preference for which slot? I can do, you know, I can do any slot. So if you have a preference on any slot. Living or dead. 
I hope All right, gain that two life. That's that's an important two life, getting us up to thirteen. So it's not a two turn clock now. Hopefully they're done with these phoenixes. First or second? Okay. All right, I'll I'll just have you down for first. So yeah, I'll get you down there first, right up, right away. This time. Hmm. I mean, I have nine power in play. What are you doing? I'm going to feed you here in just a little bit. I feel like I should cast this first. In case they have like a shock, I get like the triggers on the Worthy Knight. I guess if they have a shock, they get to kill Midnight Reaper and do one damage to me and I die. So yeah, I guess I guess if they have a shock, I'm dead. Unless I draw something here. Nope. They got there. So maybe I do need these. Maybe this isn't really a, a Clackbridge Troll matchup. Okay. I'm not. I'm not a big fan of the dance of the, dance of the man's decks. Um, I don't. I don't think they're too impressive, honestly. And like, they're kind of deck that if they if they do become a bigger part of the metagame, they're very easy to sideboard against and and deal with. Uh, lava coil is really rough. Because that exiles, I don't get to get it back with my Soren. Yeah, that's Doom Foretold is definitely the best card in the deck. Like, if they have a whole bunch of Doom Foretolds, you're gonna be losing. Now. 
So this does mean that they will likely be able to kill the Soren. The Soren still did its job. So all I gotta do is play any spell, make the Crackling Drake 4 power. Five lands. Well, what are the chances we're just going to get a sixth land in a row there? So yeah, we know those. So now we know those bottom five are lands. I'm glad we didn't just like draw land to play a Thero Absolution though. If they just you know one mana bounce it, that would been rough. By your side, I am open. A quest of mystery. All the acclaimed contenders. Real Science just has too much loyalty. It's just not worth it to attack. Just too much loyalty. Yeah, so that they, yeah, they're playing Phoenix. That's two spells they just two one mana spells they just played there. They didn't didn't save to try to get Phoenix back. All right, Kitty Dexterity, have a good night. Hmm. What is my strategy here? Hey, uh, enigmatic. Oh, I'm struggling with talking now. <laughs> but anyway, welcome. What's up? We're getting a little bit of a later stream here. So they should be bringing back two phoenixes, which is going to be rough. I I would like to draw land and play absolution. Because uh, then my contenders are four power, and then their phoenixes are just two ones. Enema. There you go. All 
Okay, we got there. Looks like maybe they have another shock. I'm still just putting the pressure on them. Awesome, Bivalanci. Yeah, glad you like the Selesnia Knights deck. Yeah, that is really solid. And as I was talking about before, like I, I kind of feel like maybe the best version of that is is honestly just kind of moving to Abzan and and you know getting good removal with like Murderous Rider also. And um, but then you know having like having this kind of deck, but having the Great Henge mm, a quest of and everything in it. It's kind of hard to have like the the four mana knight that's green green white 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 then also playing murderous rider that black black it's difficult to do but yeah black gives you removal gosh they just have so much all right well Never, was never able to get rid of this Royal Scions. Oh, that's perfect. Run, Will. Gotta kill that before it ultimates. All right, now we're back. Now we're, uh, it looked really bad just a, a turn before, but that was just a perfect draw. We gotta get this lifelink in here. All right, so my plan is to use Ethereal Absolution to kill all these Phoenixes, basically. That's my plan. They have to find bounce for Ethereal Absolution, which it doesn't seem like they have so far if they don't. Yeah, I know. We're already we're a half hour over. This looks like this is just gonna be a three match league also. We're not gonna have time for a fourth match either. Because yeah, we got a twelve hour stream and we're already half hour over. <laughs> so yeah, I gotta get some sleep. But again, it's hour forty five minutes for three matches again. Like earlier. I thought Standard was going to speed up. Without Oko, but not, not so far. We don't really have to. Yeah, you know we can. Even if they would be able to get back the phoenix, we could wait to respond. Um, to the the phoenix trigger that's coming back, and then we can exile. The phoenix to make it a two two. But yeah, obviously we're gonna be able to just exile the phoenix, make it two two. They can't really get through anymore. All right, so Ethereal Absolution did some work there. Okay, so about the deck, 
Um, I th Absolution was was still awesome. Okay, so I was wrong about wanting to take one out for the for the five mana um, knight for that cavalier. I was honestly I, I was wrong. Absolution was still awesome. I think I liked twenty six lands overall. Like, you know, there's there's a little bit of us flooding, but a lot of times you know, like we didn't have like really enough lands, and we were trying to draw into more lands. So I kind of liked having the twenty six lands overall. Um, so yeah, I, I liked that. I think our, our sideboard could use a little bit more for control, especially if we play this fourth ethereal absolution. So maybe just like maybe the three citadel isn't enough, and then honestly the two kaya is probably overkill for the um, the two kaya is probably overkill for the um, for the witches oven matchup because you know we still have all these ethereal absolutions and everything. Let's do. Let's do an extra Soren. An extra Soren in the sideboard for control. Soren's really good at like bringing stuff back and everything. And then, then I'm not sure what else. But yeah, we'll take out Akaya. And we do have the three Citadel, but then Soren's also just help our Citadels be a lot better also. So yeah, I like that. So maybe just try that. Yeah, that that seems like this seems this seems good. Get this fourth this absolution back in here, and get an extra Soren in the sideboard to be able to bring in. Because yeah, that that life link definitely makes Citadel better with all that life link. So yeah, getting a third Soren sounds good. Cool. Um, yeah, fourth contender, fourth Minet Reaper, good. I don't think we we didn't really miss the Wintermore Commanders for like the two mana slot too much. Um, so yeah, kind of, you know, we made, tried one thing of not having the four absolutions, but now the absolutions were awesome. So get that fourth one in there. All right. Orzhov Troll Knights. Still a really fun deck. Um, still looking pretty good. Still looking pretty good. Again, we'll have to play this one some more, but you know, an hour, 50 minutes for three matches. Uh, that's, that's just going to be it for tonight. These, these games just take a long time, but if you're watching on YouTube, hope you're enjoying them. You know, I hope, you know, we have a lot of whole, whole lot of back and forth, a whole lot of decisions, all that kind of stuff. They're good games. They just don't end very fast. Um, yep, against heavy control. Yeah, you take out all the ethereal absolutions, bring in all, like, basically take out the four absolutions, bring in the Soren and the, and the three Citadel. So you just kind of make that change. And then you want some duress. You can, you can probably cut, like, a, like one or two Clackbridge Trolls. You can kind of trim around on on these things also, like Knight of the Ebon Legion, that dies a whole lot, and you know just kind of trim around these things also. Um, and but yeah, like that's that's your that's your change to the top end. Thanks, Rex. All right, so uh, yeah, and of course you know like that for YouTube. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, uh, leave comments. I really like seeing the comments. Um, and of course, I hope you check out the Patreon page if. If you're enjoying the videos and everything, want to help support the stream, it's just $3 a month for the Patreon page uh, for those of you YouTube uh, watchers over there. Um, you only get billed the first of the month. See, so you don't get billed right away for signing up. So it's free to sign up. It's just the first of the month is just $3. And uh, the, for the rewards for that, you, you get to, uh, to see the written content. I'll be writing stuff over there. Uh, we wrote about, wrote about like the very brand new format right away after... Uh, the bandings on Monday, and then I wrote about uh, the 20 historic cards today. And I'm just going to continue to write over there um, every few days. Uh, I'll be writing stuff about just about standard and everything like that. And also put um, cyborg guides. I'm probably going to start, probably going to put cyborg guide for like this Orzov Troll Knights and the Selesnia um, deck over there because I know there's a lot of y'all liking those two decks. So I should make some cyborg guides for them. All right, but there we go. That's so you get all that for, like I said, for just free to sign up, but then three dollars a month. So uh, it's Patreon.com/slash Todd Stevens MTG. There's a link down below. I guess I could put it here in the Twitch chat also. All right, Hawkeye. Let's say let's say bye to him. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Say Hawkeye. Say bye, Hawkeye.